Pour ce nouvel épisode de Lumière Pure, on se retrouve à Berlin pour enquêter sur l'aquaponie, une forme d'agriculture durable encore méconnue et pourtant très prometteuse. On s'est dit que le mieux pour enquêter sur le sujet, c'était d'aller dans la plus grande ferme aquaponique d'Europe. Alors nous y voilà en compagnie de Nicolas, le cofondateur de CF Farm Systems. So let's imagine I'm a 10 years old child. Can you explain me how aquaponics works? Well, aquaponic is the combination of two uh, ways of actually producing food. One is aquaculture, so basically raising fish on land in tanks, uh, and in combination with um, food production without soil. It's called hydroponics. So the word aquaponics derives from aqua, from aquaculture, and ponics from hydroponics. And it works like this, you have fish, you feed the fish, the fish produce uh, metabolic products, so it's pee and poo. Uh, the pee is uh, ammonium, and this ammonium gets converted by bacteria into nitrate, which is fertilizer for the plants. So basically, you take the excrements of the fish and convert them organically into fertilizer for the plants, and you use this water, this nitrate-enriched water, for the production of all sorts of different kind of vegetables. And in a common aquaponic way, the plants work as a catalyzer or they clean the water, they take the nitrate out of the water, and the water runs back to the fish. And so it's a very uh, resource efficient way to produce food of highest quality. On peut construire des fermes aquaponiques en ville, sur les toits et dans les campagnes. On peut même convertir des fermes conventionnelles en aquaponiques. La production tourne sur un cercle vertueux et permet de développer l'autosuffisance alimentaire des villes. Dans une Europe en urbanisation croissante, pourquoi ne mettons pas davantage l'accent sur ces techniques Can you grow every type of vegetable with every kind of fish Well, in theory, yes, but uh, not with every kind of fish. Um, well, you see, salt water doesn't work, so you can only uh, work in aquaponics if you use uh, um, freshwater fish. Well, there's a, a, a huge variety of different kind of vegetables, um, starting from all sorts of leafy greens like salads, herbs, tomatoes, cucumbers, eggplants. Um, what doesn't work so well is if it's like a carrot or something that grows under the soil or in earth. That's something that, that doesn't work good. L'aquaponie ne date pas d'hier. Les Aztèques utilisaient déjà cette méthode qui permet à l'agriculture de se libérer de la contrainte du sol et donc de quitter la campagne. Un atout non négligeable sur une planète où plus de 75% de la population mondiale vit en ville. In your opinion, should we focus on urban agriculture to build a more sustainable food system? I think it's a niche. I think the big challenge is if you look at the world is that we have more and more people uh, by the minute uh, living on this planet. Uh, they all need food uh, three times a day. And most of them, according to a lot of different sources, will live in cities uh, uh, by, I think, 2030. About 80% of people are expected to be living in urban areas. And um, it does make sense to think about how can we actually provide food for these urban areas um, with a better overall balance, so with less transportation mileage, with less, less cooling mileage. mileage. And um, so I think producing in the urban area is not really necessary. Uh, the key challenge is to actually produce close to urban areas in production systems that produce high yield on the least amount of square meter with the least amount of resources. That's, I think, the, the key for, for future development uh, because uh, I love organic food production and I love, uh, uh, you know, to think about that, you know, we take a lot of space to produce food but the challenge is going to be space. So we need to become more efficient, space efficient. And that's if you have these high tech systems that allow you to produce maximum output on a minimum footprint with um, the least amount of resources. That's, that's I think, what would be the, the game changer. Cette ferme de 1800 mètres carrés produit 30 tonnes de poissons et 30 tonnes de légumes par an. Je l'ai visité par les Berlinois. Sa production a d'abord été vendue via un système de box hebdomadaire, puis sur le plus grand marché de producteurs de Berlin. Aujourd'hui, ECF veut accompagner d'autres personnes dans la création de leur ferme en les soutenant dans le processus de A à Z. Can you explain us how you manage to reduce ECF's carbon footprint? First of all, is transportation mileage, um, uh, again, cooling chains that are reduced because we produce directly at the consumer. 
um, reproduce our own fertilizer, so you know there's a reduced balance. We have a CO2 exchange between the aquaculture and the greenhouse, so the fish, of course, breathe uh, CO2. Um, you have a, over the biofilter, there's a degassing of that CO2, and we take that CO2 enriched air and put it in the greenhouse as additional fertilizer, and the plants turn that uh, CO2 into O2. So um, those are things that we do. Um, in terms of uh, transportation, when you have short transportation mileage, you need less packaging for the products to arrive in a, in a still good condition at uh, the end consumer. So by doing so just with the basil that we produce per year, we save six tons of uh, plastic uh, because we uh, can um, pack them in a different way so we don't need uh, trays to hold them up. Okay? So those are things that we are, we are currently doing. Dans une ferme classique, l'eau avec laquelle on arrose ne sert qu'une seule fois. En aquaponie, on utilise l'eau de pluie pour remplir les bassins des poissons et nourrir les légumes. Et on n'a besoin ni d'engrais ni de fertilisants car c'est les poissons qui s'occupent d'enrichir les légumes. For the moment, 80% of aquaponic farms are located in North America. In the light of your experience, how do you see the future of aquaponics in Europe? Well, I think it has a bright future. I mean, uh, we're seeing it because we get uh, requests almost every day uh, and a very interesting requests. Um, we're always a bit later when it comes to these new developments uh, than the United States. Um, but I think there's a great market in Europe, um, not so in Germany, but uh, in, in France, for example, it's a lot better because people are willing to pay also a higher price for, for uh, a good quality food, and the Germans are not really um, yet there. So uh, I think uh, from, from the whole of Europe, we pay the least amount for food of our disposable income. But uh, yeah, I think there is a big market in Europe and it's something that we'll see more of them. Cultiver, transformer, transporter et commercialiser, ces activités dédiées à notre alimentation consomment 70% de l'eau douce utilisée dans le monde. L'eau est déjà une ressource rare et va devenir rarissime dans les années à venir. L'aquaponie apparaît comme une solution pour l'économiser, réduire les émissions de CO2 et produire des légumes locaux et de saison juste à côté du consommateur. C'est la fin de notre enquête sur l'aquaponie, mais tous nos autres reportages sont disponibles sur notre chaîne YouTube Out of the Box Alimentation de demain. Abonnez-vous pour découvrir le futur de notre alimentation en version durable. Et à la prochaine pour un nouveau Lumière Turque.